Hey everyone, this is Randy I here, and today I am with my friend Jay, who is my mentor. And uh, we have been doing seminars for a couple years now where he teaches people like me uh, who, uh, who have uh, you know, some knowledge of the stock market, but, but not significant knowledge. He teaches people like me uh, how to analyze stocks, how to analyze companies, and his specialty is in uh, financial statements and, and doing a lot of the, uh, the fundamental analysis of a particular uh, company and of a particular stock. So I, I've been doing these uh, with Jay for, uh, again, a, a couple of years. He is uh, an incredible person, very knowledgeable, uh, very intelligent. And today uh, we're going to talk about Arm Corporation, which is a, a stock that, that I had chosen um, just for the purposes of today's analysis. Um, so uh, we're just going to have a normal conversation like we normally do. Uh, and, and we'll go from there. Great. Hi, everyone. This is Jay. Um, <clears throat> I've been in the financial industry for a while now. Like Randy says, <clears throat> yeah, I focus on fundamental valuations and the, the outlook of the overall industry itself. Um, just for a note, I do not believe in anything that doesn't have a fundamentals, like the tulip things in back in few few hundred years ago and these days controversially crypto so these are not my expertise nor I know anything but our con conversation between Rand and I are mostly on how we should look at the industry as overall and how the company is doing compared to its peers and what's their outlook based on some macro or industry trend uh, point of view. Yeah. Uh, so last time, well, I think uh, the last time or one of the, the last times we talked, we, we identified NVIDIA or NVIDIA as, uh, as a very strong uh, contender for, for a, a stock to buy. And, uh, and I think we both bought it. Uh, <laughs> that, that turned out to be a, a good choice for, for both of us. That was a, a good, uh, yeah, that was a good, uh, good spin of the wheel for, for, for NVIDIA. Um, yeah. do, do you still hold your NVIDIA or have, have you sold it? Uh, I'm holding it. I have my uh, <clears throat> target price. Um, and well, I had my original target price and then NVIDIA announced their st uh, stock split. Yeah. So that will happen this Friday, June 7th, I believe. So they're doing two, uh, one tenth of split. Well, fundamentally speaking, or, or valuations point of view, it doesn't change anything. But from what we have seen in Tesla, when this expensive stocks uh, gets split, it, it attracts retail investors, people who wanted to get into Nvidia and it was too expensive and now it's much cheaper that leaves the open door for a smaller money to get into the market. And that, that's exactly what we've seen with Tesla without any reason after the stock split and after a few months, it went through the roof. Of course, now the Tesla is not delivering what they yeah. promised mm -hmm. and they, they are failing everyone's expectation. Now it has gradually lost its value. Um, but I, I think NVIDIA is a little bit different. Yeah. NVIDIA does have a strong fundamentals. It's not, it's not banking on what we will do as Tesla did. NVIDIA is actually delivering their result. Um, they uh, they just now, well, a few weeks ago, they announced their 2023 financials and it was crazy. 90% margin. Wow. Wow. Even wow. if you try sell water, you don't get that. Yeah. <laughs> you really can't get that, especially yeah. in the manufacturing business. I mean, it's a semiconductor, but fundamentalist manufacturing business, they did 90% gross margin. It's unbelievable number. Holy shit. Um, I, I sold some of my NVIDIA. I, I still have some, but I, I did uh, just reaped in some of my profits. W what's your target for NVIDIA? It's like, it's over a thousand right now. Uh, last time I checked. Yeah, it's, it's a bit over a thousand. Um, after one tenth split, it will be one tenth of a value. So what, it will be about a hundred bucks, hundred ten ish. Yeah. My own target is 160. That's 
once it hit, once it once it reaches to that point, I'm selling out. But again, that depends on their quarterly deliverables. We'll have to see what the market or or what their financials are look are looking like once we get there. And also, yes. um, <clears throat> the movement from OpenAI, they are tapping to the capital market, asking for money so they can set up their own NVIDIA, not buying NVIDIA's GPU. So we'll, we'll have to see what the macroeconomic dictates by then. But at the moment, with the information that's pu publicly available, my own, my personal target is, um, is 170 and then I'll cash out. Okay, amazing. Now, of the, the ones that, that we analyzed uh, in, in past years, I'll just give you a recap. Uh, all of them, with the exception of one, has done really well. Uh, so ASML um, ha has done has done really well, not not as well as as Nvidia, but but has done quite well. I think it's up by close to 100% from the time that that I bought it, which is I'm not too sure if you bought some at the same time, but uh, at the time when we did the analysis uh, a couple of years ago, it, it's gone up. I think close to 100 percent since yeah. since that time. Uh, the one that did not go well, and, and you were you were really right about this. I, I bought it um, contrary to, to your suggestion, but uh, Match Group did not do yeah. uh, very well at all. It, it, it sunk by about 66 percent uh, since we did our analysis, and it was uh, you were right in in suggesting that it was not a good target. Your recommendation to me at the time was actually not to buy it. Um, yeah. but I, I think I was like too obsessed with online dating or something. And I, yeah. <laughs> I, I bought many. <laughs> um, yeah. The not, I don't want to say a problem, but the short fill of match group is yes, they control a lot of market share of the dating apps and whatnot, but the barrier to entry is, is not as high as Nvidia. It's not capital intensive. And their micro fee structure, I just don't love it. And it's not a fundamental service or fundamental manufacturing um, company that's that's almost quasi-government. It's required in the world, like anything mm -hmm. that's related to semiconductor. These things aren't going away for, for a while, in my personal opinion. But Match Group, yeah, just... Just didn't see them flying. Yeah, and, and they didn't. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, but everything else, there was, you know that uh, uh, IDX, I, I think the there was a pet um, company. No, it wasn't pets. It was, they, they were doing something about pet uh, diagnostics or something for yeah. pets. Yeah. Uh, we did analysis, I think IDXX or IDX or something like that. That that company actually did okay. It didn't double or anything like that, but um, yeah. I think we did an analysis during the pandemic about that company, about people needing more diagnostics for their pets because of the pandemic, they were getting yeah. more pets. Um, so that recap on that, that did well. Uh, Shopify, like I think we did an analysis on Shopify and yeah. it went up and it went down. It like crashed by 20% recently. Yeah. Uh, so I, I don't know if you've been following Shopify, but it's, it's been, it's been going up and down a lot. Yeah. No, I haven't been. I've been really been following Shopify and um, <clears throat> just at a three thousand feet, the high level overview. Shopify was once the largest, lar the largest cab in Canada. And thinking back, I don't under. I I was also convinced, in a way, that okay, they will. They'll do good. Maybe they can truly become Canada's Amazon. But then their business model shifted away a little bit. Now they're, it, it looks like they are more focusing on business services. Mm, that's, okay. that's, that's my yeah. feel. And I'm not sure I'm going to have to dive deep dive into it. If I want yeah. to find out, find out more. Yeah. But well, that, that's for another day. Yeah, so that 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 like went up, that went down. But again, most of the analysis we did was was pretty accurate uh, in terms of uh, your recommendations. Uh, before we talk about ARM, what are your general thoughts of the stock market in general at, at, at the moment? Um, in general, at the moment, the semiconductor industry is killing it. Okay, especially with 
with AI <clears throat> and its related suppliers, basically NVIDIA and, and, and any suppliers attached to that value chain is really killing it. Um, and it is somewhat, I think a lot of it is supported by, by their financials. But what worries me is we, all, we always have to think about the stock markets are reflecting the future values. It's within the stock price is as as is because people think oh they're gonna do so much better so that is reflect so much better or or worse so that is reflected in today's price and we say it's a forward looking price. Now the question is okay the stock price is whatever today but can they grow even further? Can they justify their forty percent? Uh, 40x valuation or <clears throat> or is it just going to be another tesla where people think oh they're going to do so great so that all that price all that future values are reflected in today's price and as, as we progress along they eventually fail to achieve what people think they can achieve or what the street think they they achieve i think there's a bit of um a little bit of an over optimism but notwithstanding that they their fundamentals are very strong. Yeah. Uh, so is that what's driving the stock market right now? The uh, semiconductors and, and perhaps to a lesser extent, like the the Metas, uh, Alphabets, Amazons, like the, the big uh, NASDAQ, the core NASDAQ stocks? Thanks. Yeah, the core NASDAQ stocks. Um, today was a little bit interesting day. For example, um, QQQ, so the NASDAQ ETF, didn't do as well as the individual stocks did. So really what that what that is saying is really those top seven or top 10 performing tech companies were, uh, or the tech value chain companies are still leading the market. Mm, and okay. um, other side of that, there's also Costco, a huge weird anomaly to me a retail company growing that fast, that much. Maybe this is, maybe we can save this for next time's topic. Um, okay, well, I didn't even know they were growing that quickly. Yeah, it's it's just so not making sense to me, but stock market in general is half fundamental and half people's, half our emotion, right? Yeah. So. Yeah, so uh, do you think that we are, and this is your opinion, I'm this, I'm not going to hold you to this, but um, do you think that we're in the middle of, of a boom um, right now in, in that this is like part of a multi-year, uh, you know, boom um, cycle? Like back in 2010, 2011? That yeah, time yeah. Like, you know, we, yeah. we were recovering from, you know, but like the stock market went like this, right? So we had the financial crisis. Um, then in 20, uh, 2009, 2010, it started recovering and then it went all the way up. Up, up, up to 2020, we had the pandemic. There's a sharp yeah. drop. It recovered to new heights in 2021. And, and then, you know, Ukraine war, inflation, all that crazy stuff, 2022, uh, uh, absolutely abysmal year. Uh, yeah. And then, you know, a slow recovery in 2023 or in 2024. Are, are, are we seeing the start uh, of, of like a longer term multi-year recovery or are we moving sideways? Um. Well, uh, I, I guess I can speak to it in relation to a fixed income market, uh, basically saying the Fed rates. <clears throat> what we see, what I've seen these days, the spread between the spread in a fixed income market between a good credit and a bad credit is narrowing. So, meaning that p market consensus are generally uh, reflecting there will be a small rate cut or remain. So <clears throat> what it's how I interpret that spread is no government or at least the US government will not raise their interest rate, which helps the stock market. And they will probably lower it. And this is street, uh, street estimate from CapAQ. There is big consensus that they will have a rate cut before the election. But once the election happens, nobody knows, depending on who wins. 
um, in my own opinion, <clears throat> the stock market itself, other than those um, AI related value chain companies are doing what they're doing, not super great, not bad. I don't think it justifies uh, recent, uh, recent, not recovery, but recent hike. But if the rates cuts are coming and if it does happen, then it, will, then it will just fuel the market. And that's unrelated to the fundamentals of company's performance. I'm not saying it's going to be a bubble, but I guess in, in the most layman's term, what I'm saying is I think the stock market will go up in general, but without fundamentals. Okay. That's how I see it. Yeah. So it's, and, it's, okay. And Surely you have other, other rate maybe, cuts in response to rate cuts. Yeah, that, that may be fueled by rate cuts, that may be fueled by liquidity that governments are pumping. That may justify the high run-ups, but at the end of the day, as I said in the very earlier, um, I'm more into the fundamentals. I think about a longer longer term, but in, in a short term, I do believe the overall stock market will do well. Okay. Well, well, that's optimistic, right? We, we, one of our last conversations, we were not very optimistic because I think we had a conversation in 2022. I, I think right after the Ukraine war, I think yeah. we, we were talking in, in either February or March and and the market had not reacted immediately to the Ukraine war. I, I think they were reacting no. more to, to interest rate hikes at the time. Yeah. And we were both surprised at that. This is, you know, before, you know, it, economies caught up with, with the fact that you know, the, the Ukraine war had so many implications for, for the global economy. But I think immediately after the, the invasion, um, what was affecting the markets was actually these very uh, sharp interest rate hikes. And that yeah. was driving the markets down. And now we're seeing the long-term consequences of the war um, and, and what it's done for the global economy. And there's a, a lot of implications. Yeah, this year will be interesting. We, we really have to wait and see what the... Uh... But the citizens of U.S. select, yeah. and it, it really depends on that. But and on so that's on that's one story. The other story, or the other <clears throat> um, theory that's that's been that that I've been um, hearing is we, other than those few sectors, n not everyone is doing well personally, and U.S. is growing their ballooning their GDP based on debt as they always have. Yeah. And, sure. But as they always have, but there, but the uh, the rate of that increase, or the calculus of that that increase is somewhat worrisome. So they're parting on their debt, yeah. and how long can they sustain that with a current state of the interest? And I know with the election, um, those leading. The, Joe Biden or, or Trump, they do want to lower the rates. But once the election is over, it's time to fix. And when that time comes, are they going to increase their rates again? Nobody really knows. So it, this is going to be an interesting year. What we talk about today may not be applicable at all at the end of this year. Yeah, for sure. So, well, look, if I mean, I, I'm actually personally quite optimistic with re respect to the stock market. Uh, I I think, and and again, I, I I'm not an expert on this, and who do what do I know? But uh, I think we're actually at the start of of a longer multi-year recovery, mm -hmm. and a and a boon cycle is uh, is how I'm seeing it. I know the fundamentals are not always there uh, with the global economy right now, um, but but I feel just for for the stock market, which which is not the economy, right? The stock market is so yeah. it's not it's not exactly the economy. The stock market is is its own thing. Uh, I, I I sense that we're actually in the beginning. Like the, for me, this would be sort of like 2009, 2010, where we're at the start of a longer term uh, recovery, followed by by new heights. Right. I think mm -hmm. the Nasdaq this year uh, didn't it reach its all time high. Uh, like re like You're reaching all time months. high almost every day. Yeah, yeah. yeah like it, it reached it reached all time high. It, it's actually surpassed its 2021 peak, yep. uh, the NASDAQ. Um, so I can only, like from a technical analysis perspective, it, it seems to be only going upwards, right? <laughs> um, yeah. yeah, it's funny you mentioned technical analysis. I know it's a thing. <clears throat> and those quants 
order the concentrators are concentrates are real, but um, I'm a textbook guy. Uh, all the courses in the professional studies that I did, what they taught me was quants trades are aren't real. Yeah. That's that's what the textbook says, but these are real for sure. But as a fundamental, I'm a fundamental guy. I look at their fund. The first thing I look for is their fund, their financial statement, even before I look at their names. Yeah. So from that perspective, maybe. Maybe maybe we're at the beginning of the boom. I think what, um, the election of this year will decide if we are going into the big boom cycle of yeah. what we had in 2010, or are we going into some cure period so everyone can uh, load off their debt and restart? We'll see. Yeah, for sure. We'll okay. really depend on politics. <laughs> uh Let's talk about ARM. What, what do you what do you think of this? Uh, I mean, I, I I just full disclosure. I I I have some of uh, this stock. I mean, I have it. Um, I, I bought it a couple of months ago. I'm personally unsure whether that was the right choice to buy it. Uh, I I bought it mostly on a whim. Again, without without consulting you, uh, I, I bought it based on uh, probably not the best idea, but I bought bought it based on some you know some newspaper articles and and people saying that there maybe there's potential here. Um, so, so I wanted to see your, your thoughts and depending on your thoughts, I may, I may keep it for the long term, or I may just sell it at its earliest opportunity once I make a bit of profit. So, um, mm -hmm. so I, yeah. What, what are your thoughts on it? Uh, I'm hot and cold. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm <clears throat> but there, there's, I do see a super potential them just following NVIDIA or on the other hand, I see them as have you reached your full potential already and there's no more growth? So I'm at this, I'm at the same, I'm having two opinions at the moment, sure. but I guess we can, we can go right into why I think that. Sure. Uh, or what we can start with, and, and this is, this is how silly I am with, with my financial decisions here. I don't even know what they do. So, <laughs> so maybe we can start with the basics. I, I'm going to, I'm going to confess. I, I'm not even sure what they do. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I'll pull up our favorite, Painter. Okay. Mm, let me share. Here we go. Am I sharing my? Yeah, I see it. Okay. Um, again, this is everything is thirty thousand feet uh, high level analysis and high level looking with sure. some of the financials. <coughs> <coughs> So ARM is a fabulous, fabulous company who are, who provide architecture for semiconductors. Okay. Yeah. If somebody told me that in a French, it means same to me. I don't yeah. understand. Okay. So why don't we put it in an easier way, um, something that everyone can understand. So for example, when we build a building, somebody has to draw a blueprint. So let's say here's a blueprint. An architecture, a designer comes in and gives a blueprint of the overall building. Sure. Once that's done, more sophisticated, shouldn't say more sophisticated. Once that's done, the interior gets done. And <clears throat> Uh, what's the big blueprint for overall architecture? If the building is going to stand its own, does it meet the stand, government standard and whatnot? That's got to be the first. And once it's done, then more, more detailed, um, shouldn't say architecture, it becomes a design. The more detailed design, especially in, in interior, design happens. And then it becomes construction. That's my outsider view of the construction work. And if I use this analogy to a semiconductor market, who, who makes actual semiconductors? TSMC. Yep. And who designs their own semiconductors? Well, isn't that NVIDIA that designs it? Yep. Exactly, that's NVIDIA, uh, uh, Apple does it, Samsung does it, 
there's a whole bunch of like microns and all these small guys, but these are really the threes. But who provides the blueprint? Uh, no, that is, isn't that uh, ASML? Yeah, or that's something that's ARM. Okay, that's ARM. ASML is here. ASML is a tool to construct. Okay, they're they're they're. I know they're like the grandfather at the bottom of the totem pole, right? They're they're like the yeah. very. Um, they are at the bottom of the totem pole on the yeah. construction side. Without okay. AS ASMC, they cannot construct a semiconductor. Yeah. But you can still design, you can still create or architect a blueprint without a tool. And what ARM does is they hold IPs on this architecture. Okay. So think about think ARM as a um, a, I don't know who's the famous art building architecture these days. I'm 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 really I don't really have much knowledge outside of what I know. But ARM architects the most basic blueprint for semiconductors, and they sell those blueprints to Nvidia, Samsung, Apple, so they can use that blueprint and design it so that it works for their individual needs. Okay. Are, are there other companies like, like ARM that, that design these blueprints? There is Intel who does, who covers start to finish. But, well, Intel is really, uh, let's think about, think about them as a vertical, um, vertical mer they have successfully expanded their business vertically so they create blueprints they design for their own uh, they design their own semiconductor to meet their needs and they also construct intel covers all but the main difference between arm and intel well, intel's been doing pretty not not as great as nvidia or arm but Intel, <clears throat> Intel has been historically the dominant of the dominant of the overall semiconductor market for centuries. And why aren't they as why aren't they doing as great as they did? <clears throat> is the differences between the architect from ARM and Intel? So let's let's go back a few decades ago um, when when I was younger. No smartphone, no tablets. We yeah. have a desktop that connects to the wall, right? Yep, that's right. What Intel thought and did back then is we need high performing, um, less efficient. Efficiency didn't matter back then because it's connected to the wall. It's there. You're you're getting unlimited power source. So what they what they wanted to focus on was I they wanted to create a chip that's so that is very powerful and that's capable for many things, but they didn't really focus much on efficiency and making it smaller, all these all all that all features that are desirable today. And ARM, their their ancestor Acorn back then um, in in England, what they wanted, they also wanted to get into blueprint business, but there is big Intel dominating the market, so they couldn't get in. So what they trying to figure out was, okay, what is drawback of Intel's product? And they found out, they decided, okay, the, the most drawback of Intel's product is it, it requires a lot of energy. It's, it's, it's very strong, but it, it requires a lot of energy to operate. And what ARM did back then was they architect a smaller semiconductor that's more efficient, but less powerful, which wasn't very desired feature back then. But since Apple started doing, well, I guess re recreating the market with, with, um, with their iPhones, iPad, and now it's becoming any tablets, um, now AI and all that, what they require, I think we talked about this before, these things require a small 
but many chips, not Intel's one big great mm -hmm. chip. Yeah. So now that has led ARM to dominate the architect, the fartless market. To <laughs> you, you left when they hear their um, market share. Ninety-eight percent of tablet market, uh, cell phones, tablets, mobiles, basically. Really? ARM. They're, ARM. They're designing the blueprints for ninety-eight percent of of the tablets and mobiles, and uh, yeah. Wow. So. They have completely dominated the market. Um, you hear at Qualcomm's Snapdragon, um, Apple's M1, M the A16, all these chips. These are basically all based on ARM's architect. Okay. Um, and because they have the IP, it, it, I guess it, it's difficult for other companies just to come in and, and, and muscle them out, right? Exactly. They can't. And how ARM makes money is <clears throat> every time this NVIDIA, Samsung, uh, Apple, or whoever uses their blueprint, they get a royalty. Oh, okay. So they're like a music company that gets <laughs> like a licensing <laughs> royalty. Yeah. Well, we'll pull up their financial statement and see, but it's um, it's mostly a royalty and also just revenue for buying for a multi-contract. So basically two line of, um, two lines of their revenue. Let me just pull up their financial statement. Yeah, let's take a look at how they're making their money. Um, Here you go. So total revenue. This is three months ended. So this is what we want to see. Fiscal year ended. Their revenue is basically two streams. One license and the other royalty. To me, well, license, royalty are pretty much the same to me. Yeah. They don't sell product. They sell IPs. They sell designs. They sell, they sell um, the blueprint for the semiconductors to be used in in Apple's. Uh, I don't know what's the latest chip that they have. M six M something A sixteen A seventeen. So that's that's how they make money. And this different focus on their. Uh, strategic decisions on be more let's be more efficient let's make it smaller but and then yes it will get uh, less powerful then we'll just put it to that mindset didn't work back then but now the the rise of mobile devices and ai which require by the way which requires a lot of small not the best chips and that's how nvidia is soaring these days are basically 100% based on ARM's architecture. Okay, so so you know when when you hear ARM in in popular media, and that's how I uh, was inspired to to buy the stock in the first place. It, it it's it's associated with a conversation about AI, right? There there's that link between is that in your opinion is that is that uh, is that link yeah. uh, is, is that a true link between between the two? Yeah. As NVIDIA ships, uh, as NVIDIA sells more of their GPU, the more royalties will get in there. Okay. So so more AI programs and, and software and, and things, technology using AI more requires more chips and those chips more, 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 more computing. More computing equals more royalties and, and license fees. Uh, how, how uh, for these royalties and licenses is it like per chip or how, how do they make uh how do they make their money yeah it's it's not publicly available but what uh what's what we know as as a market is they get into a longer somewhat longer contract so they they just announced a, a recontract with apple okay. we know the total value but we we don't exactly know what what the terms of conditions are? Okay, so some, like somehow longer longer uh, contract period where Apple will pay X dollar of amount to ARM per chips or per revenue unknown. Okay, so there's some type of economic link, and and is it scaled in, in your in your thoughts that if more people use Nvidia chips or or Apple products. If that scales, does ARM make more money? Yeah, yeah, okay. it's 100% tied to that. Okay, so th there is a direct correlation. 
here that yeah. the 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 more stuff that that is sold by these other companies and the more the consumers use these products it, it flows back somehow we don't know exactly how but it flows back yeah. somehow to air yeah okay so that's good and so that's 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 positive in that there's there's a direct correlation because as we know more people are using ai and more people are using you know the, these chips yeah but this is a very positive thing and that they are dominating the market but let's think about what it means to be dominating the market we talked briefly about the stock price as that today reflects the future value based sure. on how much they can grow and whatnot sure if you are 98% dominating the market, is there more growth potential for you? Very little. <laughs> so that's the trip. ARM hasn't fallen into that this trap, but this is what worries me. How further can you grow? Or if you have already reached your maximum potential, what should be your fair value? That's my ice day, have cold days. But my hot days, as NVIDIA, as there's more demand for AI, more NVIDIA, more Samsung, more Apple chips will be used, and that revenue will flow to, it, to ARM. That's my hot side, the cold side. But you've reached to that. The um, you have no more, no more growth room in there. All, all the growth now is coming from the more of a quantity that it gets sold through like NVIDIA, Samsung, all those designers? If so, how much of that value should be reflected in your stock? So so would they in effect then be just bandwagon, like a bandwagon stock, right? It just follows um, other stocks uh, in, in, in that sense. Yeah, if, if, it, if ARM has truly reached their maximum, they become another McDonald's. You go with everyone. Okay, so so you 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 just yeah okay. There's 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 no real explosive growth there. Yeah. Not not like Nvidia where where they 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 exploded. Yeah, um, that's my cold side. Sorry, let me close the window. It's raining, yeah. raining in my town. So that's my cold and hot. But let's let's talk about more, uh, more hot. Okay, but actually, before we go to that, are they actually making money though? Like back at their financials, are they are they net positive in, in terms of are they are they making profit? That was exactly where I am going to. So, can you see my screen? Yep, I can see your screen. Yep. Sorry, this is in Canadian. It says USD, but this is in yeah, Canadian. No, okay. Yeah. They are making great money. Look at their margin, 95%. Oh shit, okay. So they're, they're, they're making a killing. Yeah, their gross margin is 95%. Their EBITDA is 8, 9%. Their net income is 9.5%. So every dollar they sell, they get to keep 10 cents about, which is a lot. Okay, so the margin is, when, when you say 95%, that means that for a hundred dollars that they're selling, they're keeping five cents. Is that is that what you mean? Uh, no, when we talk about margin, I'm talking about gross margin profit. So here's our revenue, the overall revenue, the money that it came to the com company. Cost of revenue is how much they spent to create that revenue, which yeah. is ninety. This is the ninety five percent. And uh, it's you don't you don't see these numbers. Well, and you can see that from Nvidia, but you don't see these numbers. Okay, so the cost of revenue is very low relative yeah. to the actual uh, profit, and from that you you have the expenses. Yeah, and from you, there you, you have, have to pay it. your staff and everything else. Yeah. No, um, and the positive thing, hmm, not sure if it's positive. I guess it's positive. Their biggest expense line item is R and D. Okay, so they're, they're trying to grow. Um, and remind me, the net income is is after all the expenses, that's what's left, right? Yeah, after everything. This is what you take home. That's what they take home. So they take home about 10%. Yeah, their take home is about 10%. And we got to remember, it's 10% because they spent so much on their growth. 
So uh, Interesting. These, these RMD expenses, yes, of course, they're expenses and in, in an accounting term, but these expenses are not going away. You are, it's basically reinvesting into your company through your research and development. So I don't really see that as an expense that's gone out the door. Yeah, it's not like a staff expense. So, so it's incredible. They're spending uh, about 60%. Yeah. Of their entire total revenue. That's in that's in millions, right? When I'm looking yeah, at it, millions. millions. Okay. It's, so that's two billion. Okay. That's two billion dollars a year on an R and D alone. Yeah. That's a lot of R and D that they're spending. And that signals the story of they've already they've already um well, they, they are at a 98% market share on the mobile devices, semiconductor, uh, fatless. So they need something else. And that something else is, could be anything, could any, anything that, that operates with batteries because this, this, the power of architecture of ARM is it's, it's so much more efficient than any other architecture. It's smaller. So that means smaller, more efficient chip, chip design, um, chip architecture means the actually, actually smaller semiconductor, which allows battery to be bigger. That, uh, these comes to me as a um, electronic cars. Using ARM's architecture allows you to have a bigger battery and battery. What's it's just my logic's flowing. The what industry requires more battery, better battery, and that somehow go my mind somehow goes into the electronic um, the EVs. So at the moment, their sales aren't much coming from the EVs, and if the EVs are really the future, I'm not talking about Tesla, but as an industry in general. ARM should be investing in their should invest in their architecture for EVs. Okay. Um, looking at their total revenue, you're saying that the vast majority of their revenue comes from licensings and royalties. Yep. And not much else. If we go back to your previous uh, document, this is their financial statement. Yeah. Um, so so we're looking at. Yeah, if you add up those two numbers, and there's not there's not much else, right? That's that that's yeah. providing. It will add up exactly to this. Yeah, and that's that's the number we were looking at for two thousand twenty four. Yeah. Um, so the three two three three number. Um, how does it um match with say two thousand twenty three two thousand twenty two? Are are they are they growing in a sense that their revenue is getting larger? Yeah. So. <clears throat> We can get there right here. Their revenue has gone up pretty well. Their cost of revenue. We can do this quick math and see what I'm um, as <clears throat> as someone who does a financial analysis for a living. What I am interested usually is if your revenue. Uh, sorry. There you go. So in 2023, you spent 4% of your revenue as a cost of revenue. So the money that you spent to create your revenue. 2024, your cost of revenue increased a little bit, not much. But why is that? So does that mean, um, <clears throat> does that mean your price per or your royalty or your royalty or license per quantum has decreased, or are you spending more on <clears throat> more on the cost of um, cost of incurring the revenue? And in the annual um, on the call on on the annual analyst call, the CEO actually addressed this. He didn't really reveal much, but he said it's it's aligning with their overall inflation. That's what that's all that can be found in their in their script, but zero point seven percent increase 
overall, I mean, it's it's ridiculously low to begin with, so it doesn't really worry me. But what's interesting is, this is a big jump comparing to 2023 and 2024. Look how much more they're spending on R&D. Okay. So and as an investor, as an investor, I think it should be read as a good, good sign that they're not trying to uh, stay status quo, but they're trying to do something to find next decades of their growth potential. I see this as a positive thing, but of course you can only spend your R&D within your means, but RMD's means is, it's, it's, hot, it's big. Yeah. So, so it's, it's likely that they, they can supplement their, their, uh, whatever they're doing with, with something new, perhaps or with all this money they're spending on, on research and development, despite the fact that they, they've cornered the market to an extent. So yeah. they, they could that's be involved in something new. Yeah. That's what I'm hoping. And I hope they achieve that because I will probably buy ARM. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, that's a good recommendation. I mean, as I said, I already have it. Um, it's, it's something that uh, my decision right now is whether I should keep it or whether mm -hmm. I should just you know, take a profit and, and get out of there. Uh, but it looks like there's some long-term potential here with ARM. Uh, that's how I see it. And <clears throat> these are all their return on equity, return on capital. Their return on asset is really low because their assets are not that much compared to their revenue. Um, but company alone, <clears throat> looking at ARM alone, doesn't really speak much because, yes, they are doing 95% of gross margin or 9.5% of net, um, net income margin, but it has to be compared with their industry peers. So what if, um, what if ARM is doing 9.5% uh, EBITDA, percent EBITDA over revenue? But everyone, everyone else in the industry is doing 30%. Yeah. That means ARM is not doing well. That's right. No, I try tend to look at their comparables. So these are all their comparables. Uh, their peers in the industry. Look at this. Their okay, EPS. So, so what am I looking at here? Uh... You want to look at your <clears throat> the EPS okay. earnings per share. Uh, well, Nvidia uh, has and, seventeen point oh eight. So, yeah, any number that jumps to you, of course, Nvidia, right? Yeah, that that jumps to me as being really high. Um, and every and so the first three ARM, Advanced Micron, and Intel, they're relatively. Uh, am I looking at the first column, the uh, 0 0.29, 0 0.69? Yeah. yeah. So earnings per share, is is that, to, just explain that to me again, what, what earnings per share is? Yeah, uh, on a math-wise, <clears throat> it's basically doing your, um, your net income divided by number of shares. So say, okay. um, Randy, you made, let's say you made million dollars, and you have a million, your company has a million shares outstanding. That means $1 will go to that one share. Okay. Um, so, so with NVIDIA having 17 point, so that means for every $17, they have one share. Yeah. For um, every $17 the they thing, make, there is one share. One share. So <clears throat> earning um in, in a very simplistic, oversimplified term, it means your share is worth $17. Okay. Per at on a on a, on an earnings basis. So NVIDIA made eight billion. <laughs> yeah. Um sorry, eight, eight billion and five billion EBITDA. So if you we divide this five billion by number of shares outstanding, which is about Two billion is it? Um, then it gets to that. <clears throat> so um, 
again, it's a really simple term. How much of a how much of their earnings worth for each share? So the higher the EPS, the better. Okay. Um, so ARM has a fairly low EPS relative, very low EPS relative to NVIDIA. Yeah. So it, it either they're they're not earning enough or they have way too many shares. <laughs> is is that the analysis? Yeah, that's that's where that is where we're going. How I how well this is an industry peers. How I read it is this is an anomaly. We cannot compare NVIDIA to anyone else. They are, I do think they are truly an anomaly. They're doing so great. I don't, I don't think we can, it's not even fair that look at this market cap, almost 3 trillion. We cannot compare 3 trillion companies to like one tenth of their size, not even. Mm -hmm. Doing very good, super great, but I don't see this as a true comparable. Okay. Well, it looks like Qualcomm is doing quite well from, from that uh, perspective. From this perspective, yeah. Micron, eh, means they lost money. Um, so of these three, I do think ARM will at least go up in their enterprise value. Oh, sorry, one thing I should mention is that uh, ARM does not have any debt other than their operating, other than their classic operating leases. Okay. Let me show you, show you this. Well, and one other thing that I always try to pay attention is their capital structure. So how much equity they have, how much debt they have, or how much debt outstanding. So even if your company is great, you're making so much money, but if all that money is swamped by a huge debt, is it really a company do you, you want to invest in? Yeah. And that, that's most, I notice a lot of, us as a retail investors, we tend to miss that. Mm -hmm. So when we look at their liabilities, these current liabilities, um, well, I'm an account accountant for myself. So accrued compensation, these are just compensations, share based for that's being accrued for their employees. So this is not a, not really a debt to third party. Tax liability, of course, you're gonna pay tax, tax and debt, you cannot avoid. Contract liability says related parties, respectively. So this is not a loan from a bank or a loan from a private capital. Lease liability, um, the financial statements, especially with IFRS 11 coming up a few years ago. If you have a lease, you have to record it as a liability. But is lease a truly liability? as a classic term of do you owe money to the bank? I guess you, somebody can see, see it that way, but not really. And even, even if we define this as a, a real third-party debt, the amount is not big. Other than that, look at their line items. It's deferred taxes. It's contract liability that comes from here. Operating leases. They do not owe bank dollar okay so they're very conservative with respect to to debt which is which is good yeah so um, they are very unlevered and in <clears throat> now that that could be a good thing from a conservative a cons conservative management of of the financials for the company but uh capital market theory at least what I know is capital market theory suggests that appropriate level of leverage in your company actually increases your overall enterprise value because that is cheaper than your equity. And that has a tax forgiveness component, but that, that's for management to decide. Um, the bottom line is they do not have a real classic third party that they own. So is this company going to be Dissolved by overwhelming debt? Never. Okay. 
Uh, well, that's good. Uh, at least they're not going to get hit uh, <laughs> like some companies yeah. where, where their creditors come calling and then they they, they have to liquidate. Yeah. Um, so so yeah. that's good. So 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 the, the narrative seems to be a conservatively managed company that's cornered the market. I know they've been around for some time, right? They're they're not a new company. They've been around for. Well, they've been around for a few decades. They were taken to public, and now they had a re IPO last year, September. Yeah. They've so. Been they, they've been around so you know they have this it looks like they have some steady at least conservative management um they're spending a lot on research and development um uh, their eps is a little bit lower than uh than some of their peers so yep. in terms of <laughs> and that is prevalent here their number their shares outstanding is not a lot compared to the others. Yeah. It's not overly a loss. So that doesn't justify your denominator is big. So it really comes to they are not making as much as other peers. So what does it say? Maybe they maybe maybe there's more potential that they can make more money. And okay. so, interesting. So so we're saying that relative to their peers they're not making, well, that would make sense if most of their revenue is actually from licensing and royalties. So they're, they're I, I, I'm using this term as a uh, term of art, but there's a little bit parasitic in the sense, right? They're, yeah. they're, they're not they're not creating something that is a standalone product they can sell directly to a consumer. Yep. They're they're riding on the coattails of, of other uh, businesses to, to yep. pay them back uh, a, a fee. Yep, 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 basically, basically. But those their customers being Apple, Nvidia, these guys, they will never go away now. They are they are at least for 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 some time in the future, they will be with us and leading the AI revolution or whatever. As more of these evolve and as they make more semiconductor, they design some more semiconductors, more fees and li license fees, royalties will flow through flow to ARM which AMD Intel doesn't have. So if it was a zero sum market, are we talking about a shift of revenue from these companies to here, potentially? Any, any shift from Intel's revenue from Fatless coming, uh, shifting to ARM, perhaps, as they lose more market shares on other area. So yeah. that means ARM, uh, if they have truly maxed out on their potential in the mobile devices, now they need to get into somewhere else. Okay. Uh, well, I, I think the, the positive here is that if the pie grows, right, the entire pie, they would profit. Yeah. Because we talked about, like, you know, if more people are, there's more consumers buying more things related to chips or artificial intelligence or, or this type of technology, uh, the pie grows. And if the pie doesn't grow, uh, perhaps they can start shifting, uh, you know, some some revenue, stealing some revenue, if you will, yeah. from from their peers. Maybe we don't know. I I don't think they've come up with anything yet that that would give yeah. me the indication that they 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 can do it. Um, but maybe if if they were with all this narrative, if they were not investing their R and D, I'll be worried as a retail investor. But we've seen the number how much more that they, they are spending on the R&D compared to prior year. So R&D, uh, not R&D, ARM, they know they have to break into another market to, to really reach their full maximum potential in the other other sectors rather than mobile devices. Yeah. Otherwise, they'll, they'll just be stagnant. Um, and, yep. yeah. <clears throat> and this is their revenue growth and EBITDA growth over a year. Sorry, what That's is EBITDA again? Uh, EBITDA is earnings before interest, tax, depreciation, and amortization. So okay. really, in, in a simple term, um, it's a cash that came in before tax. So okay. it, it's, 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 it's a very strong uh, non-GAAP measure of, of companies' performance in terms of, okay, here's your earnings, but... Some companies have a huge expenses on depreciation if you own, if you're a very capital intensive company. But is it the thinking is, is it fair to slash your earning 
due to an, an accounting fiction. Because depreciation is not really, it's not a cash expense. It's, it's an, uh, this is an entry created by accountant to, to, uh, to make the, to make our principal work. Yeah. So these are non-cash expenses. So we add it back to get, to get, to, to get as close, uh, get to net cash in as close as possible. So their growth rate has been not bad. Okay, again, let's not talk about NVIDIA. Look at their EBITDA growth. They it doubled, it more than doubled over a year and their revenue almost doubled over a year. So let's not talk about them. It's not even fair. Yeah. So by looking at these numbers now, I think they're growing relatively well compared to their peers. Well, yeah, it looks like it's it's steady. Yeah, but <clears throat> this TV over revenue uh, in in a math, this is your enterprise value divided by revenue. So how much of, so basically what it's saying is, so if we divide your total enterprise value by revenue, it will tell you how many years of the same revenue you have to earn to get to your total enterprise value. Does that make sense? Okay. They are at 40X. So compared to others, seems a little bit higher, isn't it? So higher is, is not as good, right? Is that is that that's so their, lower that's, lower is better? Um, I'm not sure if it's better or worse, but in in a simple terms, if it's too high, that means your stock may be overvalued. Uh huh. That's what it could potentially mean. Comparing to their peers, yeah, that's 40X. You will need to perform what you did last year for 40 years to justify your value today. Hmm. Interesting. It's the highest of, even if you put NVIDIA yeah. in there, which is at 35, right? It's the highest of the of the, uh, of the group. Yeah. So there, there there's a little bit of bloating it appears uh, with with their stock, and, and you see that with, with recent like since I bought the stock in in in, in terms of its performance, it hasn't skyrocketed like Nvidia, right? It mm -hmm. hasn't like double tripled and and it is, it's it went up a couple months ago, then it went down, and now it's recovering a bit. But the, you don't see this type of exponential growth <laughs> in in their stock. So if we do compare, they are not exactly um, peers because they're in a different uh, stages of the value chain. But just by looking at the numbers, NVIDIA is growing, doubling their EBITDA and they're trading at 35X. ARM did 25%, so quarter, the 25% growth, but they're trading at 40 does it make sense from a fundamental perspective? Mm, maybe not much. And this is, an, this is another cold take that I have in terms of their, um, their revenue multiples. 40 seems to be high. So, and that happened to NVIDIA last year, two years ago. But NVIDIA doubled their EBITDA. They proved out they can do it. Will ARM do that? Hmm. Okay, so it has to be a wonder kid to, to yeah. be able to pull off an NVIDIA type of Superman uh, performance. Yeah, they, they have to. And, and in a short to midterm range, they will have to prove that this 40 is justifiable and and just 40 while it seems high we, we've seen this in in tech space we've seen this a tesla tesla was so out of reach people the wall street the street came out with um, a 
with the new ratio called the dream to price ratio. Yeah. We've Wasn't it that. like 200 or, or something like ridiculous? Yeah, or, yeah, yeah. it was close. It was about 200 something. Yeah. So nothing justifies that unless they prove it out in, in a short to midterm, which Tesla has failed. And that is now very well reflected in their stock price. Yes. Yes, it is. Okay. Well, so the bottom line is, are they going to be like NVIDIA who's going to prove out they were actually indeed valued worth 40 times? Or are they going to be a Tesla where people thought they could, they do, they could do, but they failed to achieve. Hmm. That we'll, we'll find out in two years, but... <laughs> I love it. <laughs> and time will tell, right? And we we'll, we'll find out, but given the market sentiment of how the overall pie of AI and its related sector just ballooning, I think the potential is much higher than Tesla. Yeah. Well, there, there's a lot of uh, positive buzz, I can say, in the AI space. And because we're still... With ChatGPT especially, right? That that took oh, NVIDIA yeah. to to the stratosphere when ChatGPT came out, because the NVIDIA was was doing well, but then when ChatGPT came out, it it was like unstoppable for a while, uh, and it, yeah, it still yeah. seems to be going up and up, defying like you know, many value investors are like, what the hell's going on? Like the fundamentals don't <laughs> don't justify this anymore, yeah. but it, it just keeps going up. It's like a train that doesn't stop. Um, but I think there's just so much buzz in this time right now in human history. Where we're we're really seeing this the 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 start or perhaps the middle I don't know where we are in, in the AI revolution but we're yeah. we're we're who knows where we are but uh, you know nobody knows <laughs> but, but certainly the revolution is happening yeah uh, so something there's... is definitely happening and luckily ARM is one of one of very fundamental companies that are essential to this new era. Mm -hmm. But can they deliver or justify this 40x of their revenue multiple within two to three years? Can they do it? Or the question becomes, can they do it within two to three years or can they do it 10 years later? Remember um, the IT bubble in, in late, late 90s? Yeah. Everybody thought, well, I was younger back then, so I didn't know much. But now learning from a textbook and, and whatever, how I take it is everybody, people thought the world is going to change. They were not wrong. It changed. And people back then thought it will change soon, but that change came 10 years later in 2010. So people who bought in, in, in 1998 thought this evolution will come soon. So they bought in, but that happened 10 years later. Are we in that era or is it really changing? Is this whole AI chat GPT things, will that happen 10 years from now or will it, will it happen two years from now? Yeah. Well, I'm looking at it backwards as well. It's like if they're a very key part of the ecosystem, um, what's, what can replace them if any, if any yeah. new player, right? So which is like in that sense, they're not going anywhere. Right. Nope. I mean, there, there may not be explosive growth, but, they will uh, be but if, if they can meet or exceed the market, and I define the market as essentially the NASDAQ here in, in this context, yeah. right? If they can outperform the NASDAQ, uh, then in a way, it's still a good buy, right? As long yeah. as you're outperforming the market, I think anything that outperforms the market is a good buy. Good thing. Uh, yeah. yeah. So, so it, like doing this analysis with you, I, I don't, I don't see any other player coming in in the next two years <laughs> no. uh, unseating unless, these guys at all unless intel comes up with something crazy or this uh the founder of chat gpt I forgot his name he's he's looking and for Sam Altman. Yeah, yeah yeah he's he's looking for money to do this so he doesn't have to buy from everyone else unless that happens but i see that chance being really low so arm is here to stay for sure yeah. So well, when when that super exponential growth on this market happens, ARM will will ride. Yeah. Ride so 
I guess what I'm feeling at, at the end of this talk is, is that they're they're not going anywhere. The chance of explosive growth is is probably not there. Not 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 in the in the media sense, right? I mean, explosive yeah. as in Nvidia as being the market leader in terms of exponential growth. Um, they're a bit bloated. It, it looks like, but their current value is is a bit bloated. But they have no debt. They're spending a lot in R and D, so they're certainly aware. They're not blind to the fact that they're yeah. um, maybe that they're bloated or or that 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 their revenue streams are are limited to royalties and and licensing, right? So so it looks like they're looks like management's at least aware of that. <laughs> this is yeah. they're, they're not they're not blind to it. That's what it looks like, and I can show you one more thing. Um, the street. This is the street so, target. Okay, so uh, the street. What's the price right now? It's like a hundred and what? Uh one one two, I believe. One one two. It was sorry, one twenty one twenty seven. Okay, so the so I think it hit like one fifty or one sixty at one point. Um, yeah. 164 it looks like the 52 week high um, yeah, so it, it, it fell a bit because i've been you know i've been looking at it and it, it, it fell a bit now it's it you know it helped, fell close to 100 i think it's recovering currently yeah. so the, the target price is what 111 a median is 110 okay um well mean doesn't really matter here so you see this is a median 110 high and low See this diversion? See this standard deviation? Oh my God. So 180 uh, over 55 standard deviation. Is, so there's a, it's a significant uh, deviation between the, the high and low. Yeah, so this is a street prediction that comes from Wall Street. Someone, someone's target price 55, someone's target price 180. So when there's a high diversion or high the high um, gender deviation of a stock. Like this is, I see this as a, it, it diverged very big is exactly what we talked about. Someone does not believe ARM will deliver to justify their 40 X multiple. Someone absolutely believes that this company will justify just like how Nvidia and Apple did. All right, so it becomes, the, the, it becomes a judgmental. This is your hot encode expressed by by Wall Street. <laughs> yeah. This is okay. The code is a fifty-five. The hot is a one eighty. One eighty. But again, uh, the target price from the street it's it's usually meaningless, useless, but it's an indicator. Okay. Well, at least it means that someone of reasonable intelligence is saying like it could potentially be at one eighty, and someone saying like absolutely not, it's going to fall to fifty-five. Yeah, and this is reflected. Um, I was actually surprised they have a, some short selling interest. So somebody's shorting ARM. Yeah, so about about zero point zero point nine percent of their stocks floating is shorting. Oh, so it's not so, very high. It's, it's not a lot, but I wouldn't short. <laughs> I wouldn't short this fundamental company in, in a booming, uh, potentially booming, exploding market. But it, it shows there is somebody absolutely believing that ARM will not deliver to justify their valuation. Maybe it's uh, one of those companies. Remember that happened to that Indian company. There's, you know, they 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 expose something about the yeah. company that they they shorted. I forgot the yeah. name, but there's there's groups that do that. That's kind of like advocacy yeah. shorting. Yeah, it could potentially be that, but it again, zero point nine percent is not a lot. It's not. It mm -hmm. doesn't mean much, but it simply says there is a money out there who absolutely believes that ARM is not worth as what they are. Yes. Is anyone shorting NVIDIA just, just out of curiosity? I'm sure there is. Like what, what's the percentage just out of curiosity of, of people shorting NVIDIA? Hmm. 
Let's see. Huh. There is about 1.12 percent. Okay, so same percentage relatively. Yeah, about. Like a one percent. Yep. About one percent. Okay, well then, then, then you know if you're shorting in Nvidia, right? <laughs> then, then like. Uh, it's probably the same people. It's probably the same people. Yeah. It's, it's probably, probably the same. Way. It's probably the same group of people who are who are doing yeah. it. Or it could it could basically be some derivative um, mechanism to it to balance that to balance a big funds pull. We can't tell, but there are some shortings here. Okay. All right. Well, that doesn't concern me that much. I think the percentage yeah. is, is too low to indicate some type of mass um, shorting. Yeah. Oh, I mean, uh, the P ratio. Oops. So if we do not look at this, will be the last point. The PE ratio for ARM is 92. <laughs> it's high. Yeah. Yeah, that is high. Price to earnings, 90. I mean, we've seen this being 200 for Tesla. Yeah. Dream, dream ratio. Mm -hmm. It comes down to the same thing. Can they justify within relatively short time of short time period? Okay, so it's it's higher than Nvidia, right? Nvidia is what forty two. Uh, forty two, yeah. Okay, which, which is surprising because Nvidia is is, but but then they're earning a lot, so so it's it's um it's relative to how much. Yeah. How, how, much, how much you're earning. Yeah. How much so earning per share? Yeah. So it, it seems in all of these metrics, uh, for for PE ratio, um, and, and some of the other metrics we saw, this is a bloated stock, relative to actually how much they're making. Yeah. In, in terms of a classic valuation, um, the finance 101 textbook will tell me this is overvalued. But that's without, that's just taking the number as is without any context, right? Yeah. There is definitely a huge lucrative potential right there. Question is, can they realize it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so so it is for me. This means that other people have bought into the hype uh, yeah. earlier. <laughs> that that at some point over the last couple of years, because it, the price must have gotten this high due to price action, right? Due to people buying. So yeah. at some point earlier than us, uh, groups of people have somehow identified this stock as being important, and they've 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 pumped it up. Is, is oh. that what's happened? Um, sorry, I was gonna talk about one more thing because this. What they were, they are recently uh, IPO, right? They're a relatively new stock to the market, and they are very closely, tightly um, held company. So let me show you this uh, public. But they um, they IPO'd recently, but aren't they? They've been around for a long time, but they recently IPO'd. Yeah, they've been around as a private. Well. They were public until the late 2018, and then the Vision Fund from Japan. They took them private. Then now yeah. they're public again. They, Is that what happened? They restructured, then they, they, yeah. they, they, they now they're. They, they took it down to private when they acquired it. They wanted to the Vision Fund try to sell it, so Nvidia wanted to buy. Didn't get past this um, the dominance rule law, whatever. You're the lawyer, you know better. Yeah. Um, Samsung trying to buy didn't happen. Just nobody could couldn't buy, and then it got IPO. So what I wanted to the SoftBank the Vision Fund holds eighty eight percent of the total shares. So these shares are not being traded much. After this. The floating share is about 10% of company's total share. So if, if only that little fraction is trading the market, are they even reflecting a true value? It's mm. very difficult to tell. Yeah, so, so wouldn't there not be enough market flow to even push it up that much? Yeah, exactly. So that means... <clears throat> 
is it fair to assess or fair to compare to the other companies where like 50, 60% of this is floating and they only got 10% of this floating? Is it fair? That's a difficult decision to make as a, as a retail investor. But in my own opinion, only 10% of shares being floating doesn't fully reveal their value. And because these, uh, the number of shares that are being traded are small, there will be tendency upward. So there could be some values that are created by, <clears throat> um, by simply less shares being available. Now, uh, in, in sort of textbook manner, fewer shares on the market, is that good or, or bad? It doesn't necessarily being bad or good, but the implication is if you have less shares floating, there's a tendency for a price upward. If there are fewer shares floating, is it more price sensitive? In that it's more likely to go up or down uh, in, yep. in a more volatile it's, manner? Yeah. yeah, it is. And But the tendency, it's, uh, it's an empirical study. So there's no real academics. But over, over long term, what we have observed is the fewer company, if uh, the assumption here is a company is fundamentally okay, the fewer shares are floating out there, there's a tendency upward. The tendency and, to go upwards. Yeah. Okay. If it's exactly two same company and they have only two shares being traded, 10 shares being traded and others have 100, this tends to uh, tends to go upward. Okay. So even though SoftBank Vision took them public, they still hold most of the shares. So so in effect they they control arm. Yeah, yeah. Well, they, yeah, they are they are indeed controlling this company. Okay, so even though it's 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 ostensibly public, but it's not. <laughs> it's all, not eighty eight percent ownership in a public company. I don't know who else has that. That's a, that's a super super majority, right? That's like <laughs> yeah. that's yeah, an ultra super majority. You are a sole owner of this company. Okay, so so in that sense, it's not even public. In, in that sense, in terms of control, yeah. there's no one that can challenge any Nobody. any management decision. Um, and SoftBank is is Japanese. Uh, not surprised they don't have any debt. I mean, that's a very Asian thing. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's a vision fund. V vision fund used to hold this. So maybe this higher multiples are being driven by so little shares being traded. Maybe can't tell hundred percent, but I'm. But uh, in my opinion, there are some price move upward pressure, not coming from fundamentals, but coming from less shares being traded compared to others. Okay, I, I see, but because you have to bid higher for a fewer number of shares that you yeah. to get them. Yeah. Um, okay, well, that's, that's an interesting insight. Uh, I, I had no idea that SoftBank uh, owned like, you know, more than 80% of, of ARM. Yeah, 88%. So maybe that's what's driving this 40x and 92x of P, uh, the revenue multiple and PE multiple. Yeah. Okay. A really interesting insight. I, I don't know what to make of it, but it's 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 a it's a it's a valuable insight. Um, I mean, I, I I'm I'm leaning towards just keeping what I have for the long term, based on based on this conversation. Yeah. Um, instead of yeah. just selling it and, and taking a, a quick profit. Um, I, I think since I already have it, um, because my decision is not to buy it, it's whether I should keep, right? It's whether I should hold the position. Um, based on this conversation, I think I, I'm I'm leaning towards just, just holding it and, and see what happens in a couple of years and see if they, they, make, they, they become that miracle <laughs> company that yeah. uh, like... Uh, I think you should. You think yeah. holding, holding this... Uh, this company would be well, since you have it would be would be a I guess appropriate action yes. to do now given given their financials yeah and, and their outlook and the industry outlook 
But again, the world can turn upside down after after U.S. election in November. So, yeah, for sure, yeah, that's so. uh crazy, crazy. Um, well, no, it's it's good to it's good to see you uh, again. Please send me an invoice for for your time today, um, and or or you can wait until our next session, wh whatever you want. Uh, I I leave it to you. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's good. To, I think we haven't done one of these in like a year and a half. So it, it's yeah. good to catch up. Yeah. I'll, I'll probably for our next session, uh, you know, maybe, uh, in a month or two, I'll choose a, a different stock that, that I want analyzed and we can, we can, you know, restart, uh, more periodic meetings if you're, you're Great. free for that. Great. Okay. Amazing. Well, thanks for your time. Um, I will uh, post this on on YouTube. Um, take it down if uh, if you don't like it. If you're okay with that, we'll we'll we'll, we'll keep it on on the internet for um, for the viewing pleasure of of the general public. All right. All right. Thanks, thanks Jake. Okay. All have right. A good one. Have a good night. Bye bye. bye.